My friends, we're going to solve a real exam problem that involves the isothermal compression of an ideal or a perfect gas, and it's going to be awesome. Let's do it. Okay, so a sample of 1.5 moles of neon is compressed isothermally at 25 degrees Celsius from 10.0 decimeters cubed to 2.5 decimeters cubed, and the question is asking us to calculate the work, the energy transferred as heat, and the change in internal energy if the expansion occurred and in one of three ways. So one is reversibly, two against a constant 1.0 atm external pressure, and three against zero pressure. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Now, our definition of work mathematically, infinitesimal change in work is equal to negative the external pressure times dv. We're gonna start here. Now for the first part, the reversible process, we are going to integrate this equation and because the process is reversible, the system pressure is equal to the external pressure throughout the entire process. It's always in equilibrium. It's an idealized process, so we could just substitute that in. Uh, and this is a very important change here. So yeah, so this is the system pressure, and we integrated both sides so that the integral of dw is just the total work into here. Now at this point, we're going to substitute in the ideal gas law. We're going to solve for V and substitute that in for P right here. And we can now integrate. Here, we had P here, so we couldn't integrate it because P changed uh, changes, but we, only, we want to integrate with respect to dV. Here, we now have our V, so we can integrate this. And N, R, and T are all constants, so they get yanked out of the integral, and the integral of one over V is ln V. We're going from V2 to V1, so after simplifying and doing a log law, we have negative N, R, T, log V2 over V1. Okay, now at this point, we can just plug in the numbers. We know how many moles of the gas there are. We're plugging the right uh, gas constant. Now, we want our work to be in joules, joules or kilojoules, but if we want it to be in like joules, then you gotta have meters cubed pascals. So you wanna choose the R with meters cubed pascals. If you don't have the right R, then just put in your units and then convert it to meters cubed and pascals after that. Uh, we got the temperature, 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, and then ln of V2 over V1. And even though we're in meters cubed here, it doesn't matter what the units of the volume are because they just cancel out. And if we plug that into our calculator, our work is plus 5,200 joules. So the system absorbs this many joules of energy as heat. Okay, now to get uh, to the, the other parameters here, the change in internal energy is zero. And that's because the change in internal energy for a perfect gas or an ideal gas, it only depends on the temperature. Uh, that's it. So it's because the process is isothermal, the change in internal energy is zero. And if we use the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system, delta U equals Q plus W, this delta U is zero. So the heat, the energy transferred as heat, equals the negative W, solving for Q. We know what W is. So the energy transferred as heat is negative 5,200 joules. So the system loses 5,200 joules of heat. What this looks like, if you like pictures, and I love pictures, this is our system here. We have 5,200 joules of energy as work going into the system. So the system, think of the system as absorbing 5,200 joules of, of energy, but then it's losing 5,200 joules of energy as heat. So the energy gained is equal to the energy lost. So the total change in internal energy is zero for this reversible process. Okay, cool beans. For the next part of the problem, we want to solve for these values under constant external pressure. We're going to use the same equation for work in differential form as before. At this point, we know that the external pressure is constant, so we can yank it out of the integral, just like this. And all we have is the integral of dv, which is v. So work equals negative p external times the change in volume as we go from v final to v initial. And we can plug in numbers here. We know what the external pressure is. It's one ATM. We know what the volumes are. Final volume is 2.5 decimeters cubed. Initial volume is 10.0 decimeters cubed. Yep. And if we solve for this, we get a work equal to 7.5. And we have horrible units here, right? ATM decimeters cubed. But I like to plug in the units and then convert after. So if we want work to be in joules, we want the pressure to be in pascals and the volume to be in meters cubed. So we'll use some conversion factors for every one ATM. There's 101, 300, 
101 thousand three hundred twenty five pascals, and then ten decimeters for every one meter. We got to cube this because this is decimeters cubed. Uh, just a note: a decimeter cubed. Sometimes this looks like a, a brutal unit, a unit we don't like to deal with. But one decimeters cubed is equal to one liter, so it's actually a nice unit to have. Okay, well, if we plug in the unit numbers here. We get work is equal to plus 760 joules. So the system absorbs 760 joules of energy as work. And notice that the reversible process was higher than this. So a this is an irreversible process because it's against the constant external pressure. It's always going to be lower than the reversible process. Okay, now as before, the change in internal energy is zero because we're assuming this is a perfect gas or an ideal gas, and the change in internal energy only depends on a change in temperature for a perfect gas. So, using the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system, if we plug in zero for the internal energy and solve for the heat, we get it equal to negative of the work, and we know what the work is, so the system loses, because it's negative, 760 joules of energy is heat. And what this looks like, just like before, the change in internal energy of the system is zero. We have 760 joules of energy as work going into the system and 760 joules of energy as heat leaving the system. So there's no change in internal energy in the system. All right, y'all, for the last part, we want to compress against zero pressure. And what does that mean? Well, if we have a gas confined to some container and we re remove the divider, this is expansion into free space. So this, what we're seeing is expansion against zero pressure. There's nothing preventing these from expanding forward. There's no pressure. There's no piston here. They're just freely moving into empty space. So that's expansion against zero pressure compression against zero pressure would be the opposite of this. And I don't know who writes these exam problems, but that would violate the second law of thermodynamics. But anyways, this is our equation for work in differential form. And if we integrate both sides, we have work equals negative the integral of the external pressure, dV, from the initial to final volume. And this external pressure, that's zero, right? So if we plug that in, that means work is zero. So the system does no work. It doesn't do any work because it doesn't have to push against anything in order to expand. Well, we know that the change in internal energy is zero because it's an isothermal process and this is a perfect gas. So using the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system, the heat, the energy transfer is heat, has to be zero joules as well. So zero across the board uh, for this Violate so zero across the board uh, for this violating the second law of thermodynamics against zero pressure. But you could use the same thing for expansion. The the numbers are the same for expansion. All right, y'all. Good luck on your midterms, your final exams, quizzes, all of that. You don't have to be a genius to do well in thermo, but you do have to try. It's not the easiest course in the world, but hang in there. Keep working on lots of problems, lots of practice problems, and thanks for watching. Keep trying. Get your pen on a paper. Keep going through it. If you have questions, let me know. I can help you out. Best of luck to you. Cheers. Mm -hmm.